Now, angiology or the vascular surgery, uh, we've got a lot many questions as far as the important vessels in the body are concerned. You have to remember that many questions have been asked in the examination, need PG, FMG, INICT about these vessels. Now, the first of the questions which can be asked in the form of a clinical scenario, once a duodenal ulcer bleeds, which is the vessel which most commonly bleeds? And you have to remember that it is the gastroduodenal artery. Do not forget the gastroduodenal artery, which can be uh, the main source of bleeding as a result of duodenal ulcer. So that's important. Now over here, I will just take, I will skip one of the things over here and the uh, gastric ulcer, gastrointestinal bleeds, they can be duodenal or they can be gastric. Now the gastric ulcer is as a result of bleed from the left gastric artery. You are well aware of the surgical anatomy of the gastric artery and you know it lies within the lesser omentum and the stomosis in the lesser omentum with the right gastric artery. It's a branch of the direct branch of the celiac trunk. So difference in gastric and duodenal is the vessels, different vessels bleed. Now, extradural hematoma, EDH, or extradural hemorrhage, you know there's an area in the skull which is the turian, where the four bones meet, and in relation to that, there is the middle meningeal artery, especially the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery, which bleeds and bleeds into the epidural or the extradural space and causes extradural hematoma, a question very, very frequently asked. Now, uh, one of the points which you have to remember, hemoptysis. Uh, ENT surgeons usually come across hemoptysis. And in hemoptysis, you have to remember that it is usually the bronchial artery. The bronchial vessels, the bronchial artery is the main source of bleed. It is not the pulmonary arteries. So bronchial word, you remember that hemoptysis is, it is a question frequently asked, simple, and many people get it wrong. Many students have got it wrong in the past. Menstruation, a physiological process in the females, during their active reproductive uh, life and you remember the spiral arteries under the hormonal influence they just get brushed off from the surface and bleed so bleeding in the menstrual cycle is a result of spiral arteries okay so then i was talking about edh extradural hematoma there's a subdural space beneath the dura mater and in there there are the bridging veins you have to remember that there are the bridging veins and SDH. SDH is as a result of uh, bleeding from the bridging veins, not from a uh, artery, not from middle meningeal artery. That's important. Uh, surgeons, ENT surgeons do tonsillectomy and post tonsillectomy, some patients bleed to death, unfortunately, but some patients uh, are uh, recognized well in time. And the most common source of post tonsillectomy bleed is from the paratonsillar veins. It is not the ascending palatine artery, it is not the tonsillar artery, it is not the internal carotid artery. A surgeon has to be very incompetent in case he damages the other vessels, but paratonsillar veins are usually damage and hemorrhage due to post tonsillectomy is due to par paratonsillar veins. This thing you have to remember. I will not go much into the myocardial infarction because you are well aware of the coronary arteries. But here I have to tell you left coronary artery, right coronary artery, they're important. And especially you have to remember this one branch, left anterior descending, which is a branch of the, I mean to say, it is a branch of the left coronary artery, also known as Widow's artery, which usually gets uh, in, uh, blocked and causes uh, myocardial infarction of a large portion of the left ventricle because it, uh, it supplies a large chunk of ventri left ventricle, which is an important <coughs> uh, pumping chamber of the heart. Now, you have to remember neurology, you know, uh, I mean, say vasculature of the nervous system. And in there, we have got one important vessel, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, pica, uh, very tortuous artery. Uh, and it causes and it supplies the lateral part of the medulla. And once it supplies the lateral part of the medulla, we get a important clinical entity, which is given the name as lateral medullary syndrome in which the lateral portions of the medulla get infarcted and that also is given the name as Wallenberg syndrome. Wallenberg syndrome is synonymous with lateral medullary syndrome and you have to remember that it is as a result of um, uh, injury to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, the left or the right. Then opposite to it is the medial medullary syndrome. Medial medullary syndrome, you know the vertebral arteries and vertebral arteries are branches from the first part 
of the subclavian artery and that causes supplies the medial part of the medulla so medial medullary syndrome is due to vertebral arteries and lateral is due to pica superior mesenteric artery in certain cases you have a patient presenting with severe abdominal pain beyond proportion and the patient has got a severe pain and superior mesenteric artery syndrome is uh, the diagnosis and it is due to blockage of sma sma is a branch of the uh, i mean to say abdominal aorta anterior branch of the abdominal aorta artery of the midgut in addition to uh, i mean to say celiac trunk and inferior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric artery syndrome is due to uh, in far a uh, blockage of the superior mesenteric artery we get intermittent claudication sometimes in which we have got a clinical entity associated with it which is given the name is lerey syndrome and autoiliac vessels they are blocked so autoiliac vessels get blocked in case of lerey syndrome also you know coronary artery bypass grafting and coronary artery bypass grafting is one of the important procedures done after thrombolysis or done after um, uh, I mean to say angioplasty and there is a vessel which is a great saphenous vein which is harvested in view of the fact that it is a vessel which is easily uh, I mean to say can be harvested and uh, it is used in CABG. Thanks a lot.